Hi everyone. So a few months ago, before I made the video about equipment for planetary imaging, um, my curiosity got the best of me and I got this Astromania planetary filter set. Um, I got it from Amazon, which seems to be the only place that you can get them in the UK. It's called a specialized planetary imaging filter set. Um, it's a set of three and the filters are infrared pass, UV pass and methane. These are not new. They've apparently been around for a while, but they're new to me. I was pretty skeptical because the description is a little bit more vague than I'm used to, and they were only 80 pounds. I think they're a little bit more now, um, plus delivery, because they ship from Amazon US, but sometimes you can find them with free delivery. Um, but yeah, 80 pounds is what you would normally pay for just one filter in these band passes, so I wasn't expecting much. But now I had a chance to try them out, and I can show you how I got on. So the first one is the infrared pass filter. I would say this this does the job well. The description says it's a 650 nanometers band pass and upwards. I would say this is, you know, this is absolutely fine. I had no issues with it, but it's the one I was least interested in because I already have the Astronomic Pro Planet one, which is almost the same band pass and does a great job. Um, I use this when I want to cut through the scene just that little bit further and I'm not bothered by color, so like International Space Station or when I'm doing moon landscapes and that kind of stuff. Um, I used this particular one to try it out on the moon and it was nice and clear. And I also used it um, when imaging Uranus to reveal a little bit of the North Polar Hood. If you squint really hard, you can just about see what I was able to resolve with my telescope. And you can use this with a color camera. I used it with my ZW0662MC. The one I was more interested in is the UV pass filter because together with the infrared pass, these two are really good for imaging cloud structures on Venus. Um, if you combine them, you can get a false color image like this that shows the clouds as yellowish. To tell you straight away, my telescope is not the best. It's not optimal for this because I use an SCT and the corrector plate and its coating, they decrease UV transmission. So this is best done with a Dobsonian or anything with like minimal glass in your optical train. But to sort of maximize my efforts on this, I use the mono camera, obviously. Um, I ditched the power mate and I removed that little protective window in front of the sensor of my camera, the little AR window. I have to say, even with my equipment shortcomings, the filter really did show some shade and shadow on Venus, so I was able to combine them and get this. Obviously, it's not as clear as it could be, but it's something, so the filter still works for me. And what I'm going to do next is try and image it at daytime instead of twilight to see if I can get a little bit more clarity. But yeah, the only thing I'll say about the filter is this one requires a mono camera. A color camera really won't do very much. If you would like to see what it does in best case scenario, this Instagram account by a lovely guy called Con has some fantastic examples of Venus in false color that are done with a Dobsonian telescope and this exact filter set. So now the most interesting one, and really the filter that I got all of this for, is the methane filter. It is so cool. It works by absorption, so where there is high altitude cloud, it doesn't absorb the methane below it, and it reflects it back as brighter areas, and it also shows areas without methane as really bright, so on Saturn it makes the rings pop. And on Jupiter, usually when there's a moon transit, I can't see the moon itself, because it gets lost in the brightness of the planet, but with this filter you can see the actual moon itself and its shadow. Jupiter is basically the most giving target when it comes to this filter, and even if you don't have a mono camera, you can still get something reasonable with a color camera. So for example, I took this with 462 mono, and I got this with 662 MC. What it also does, unfortunately, is really, really decrease resolution, but it's nice to be able to still do some imaging on nights when seeing is not fantastic. So for example, I imaged Jupiter on two separate nights when the great red spot was in a similar position. Um, and one night seeing was great and the other night it wasn't great. So I used the methane filter. I took a series of videos on both nights. So I was able to derotate them in Winjupos to the exact same position. And then when I blended them, I got this image. It shows 
um, areas of dense cloud in the upper layers of the atmosphere um, above the north polar hoods and above the great red spot and the equatorial belt. So in the end, if you're like me and you only have a medium-sized home telescope and don't have the optimal equipment, but you still want to have some fun with filters, um, I think you get your money's worth with these. Obviously, I haven't tried the sort of top-end UV and methane filters from the likes of Bader and Chroma, but I'm not sure that would make sense for me because I don't know that I can use them to their full potential. Um, I know these are not top of the line, but for now, they're great. So I hope this was interesting. I hope it was useful and have fun in clear skies.